What is going on everybody? It is Mike, welcome back to the channel. Glad that you are back with me today because we are talking about one of my favorite subjects. It is iPad keyboards. Now, if you're the owner of the iPad Air 5, maybe even the iPad Air 4 or the 11 inch iPad Pro and you've been looking for a keyboard to not only fit your iPad in the way that you use your device, but also maybe even take your productivity to the next level, you are in the right place because today we're gonna compare the Logitech Combo Touch, which is a $200 keyboard against Apple's Magic Keyboard, which is really the bar where that Apple sets how the keyboard should be used with the iPad. So in today's video, we're gonna review both these devices and I'll let you know which one you should choose based on how you use the device. Let's get started. Now today's video is broken down into different sections and I have those sections pinned in the first comment below. Additionally, anything that you see in the video today will be linked in the video description with an affiliate link in case you wanna pick something up that does help support the channel because I purchase all these devices and these accessories myself. Now, let's talk about the Logitech Combo Touch. The Combo Touch is available for the iPad Air as well as the 11 inch and 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So when you're shopping for it, you wanna make sure that you're buying the one that's made for the iPad Air as it has the cutout for the Touch ID sensor on the left hand side of the case. Here's the cutout for Touch ID. Obviously there's a cutout for the camera and here are the pogo pins on the back for your iPad. So if you wanna insert this, you're just simply going to push in the bottom first and then the top and then you see here your iPad is all in there nice and secure. I purchased my Logitech Combo Touch on Amazon over the past summer but there's no need to worry even though the branding says iPad Air 4 it does fit the iPad Air 5 which I have in this lovely blue color. Really this is I think the best color out there. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Now, as of today, which it's like Sunday, March 27th, I think it is, this case costs $150 on Amazon, $155, I think on Best Buy. So you are gonna find a varying number of prices, but it's about $50 difference off of the normal MSRP or retail price of $199. When we look at Apple's Magic Keyboard, the 11 inch version works with the iPad Air 4, the iPad Air 5, as well as the 11 inch iPad Pro, and it retails for $299. Now, if you're shopping on Amazon, you can find this renewed sometimes for about 260, 270 bucks. Uh, and really you're just getting the same product that someone opened and sent back to Amazon. It's like an open box, I would think about it that way. But it's definitely worth considering if you're looking to save just a little bit of money, this white one that I have here was renewed. I mean, I don't really care if it's open box or not. I'm, it's not a gift or anything, so I'd rather save myself the money than worry about that. The Logitech Combo Touch is a fabric wrap keyboard case that offers full protection and has several novel features depending on what you're looking to get out of your keyboard case. There is a detachable keyboard. It is designed to work in multiple contexts. There is a large glass trackpad, and there is a full row of function keys at the very top, which I am a fan of. The Magic Keyboard offers a very clean, minimal design aesthetic that allows your iPad to float above the keyboard itself with its cantilever design and first class typing and trackpad experience. The two keyboards could not be any more different as the Logitech Combo Touch prioritizes function over form, while Apple's Magic Keyboard tries to balance form and function both equally. In terms of first time setup, the Logitech Combo Touch has a detachable keyboard that allows it to be instantly removed from the case whenever it's unneeded or troublesome to go ahead and use it. You might be doing something where you want to maybe lean back and watch a movie and you don't necessarily need the keyboard attached to it and it simply just pulls apart very easily. The keyboard attaches to the frame of the combo touch using the pogo pins that are located in the very top center of the spine. Now it's worth noting that if the keyboard is not attached to the case itself, you can't use the keyboard by itself. This doesn't have a battery, it doesn't have any Bluetooth, there's no connectivity to the iPad other than when using the pogo pins directly connected to the keyboard case. This was a big question that I had, people wondering if I could take apart this keyboard case and then use the keyboard when it's not connected to the case itself. It doesn't work that way whatsoever. Now, in terms of context, you can use the Logitech Combo Touch in one of four different contexts. Either the traditional typing context where the keyboard and the case are attached to one another, the consumption context where you're maybe watching movies, you might be on a, a video call, but you have that just with the kickstand out. You have the reading context and you are using this one-handed, maybe two-handed. It's kind of heavy, I probably wouldn't use one hand, but you would use it like this. And then you also have the drawing context where you have the kickstand, which is bent up, and you're using to draw on the iPad. Now, you could use this keyboard and put it like this and then fold the keyboard around, but it does add some weight to it. And I really wouldn't suggest that because it just feels kind of heavy and it's actually more troublesome, I think, to hold, but it certainly is an option. If you like that, let me know down in the comments below. 
Now there is a kickstand on the Logitech Combo Touch and a kickstand will go anywhere between 10 and 60 degrees, playing into the context which how it can be used for typing, viewing, and drawing. Both the Magic Keyboard and the iPad have a full magnet array on the back of here, which allows the iPad to stick to the Magic Keyboard effortlessly. You could take it off one-handed, put it on one-handed. It works very simply. Now, once connected, the Magic Keyboard supports viewing angles from 90 degrees all the way up to 130 degrees. So there is a little bit less in terms of viewing angles by about 10 degrees on the Magic Keyboard than there is on the Logitech Combo Touch but practically speaking, there isn't really a significant difference in the viewing angles that you can use on here other than the drawing context, which you'd use on the Logitech Combo Touch. Now, in terms of design, both the Logitech Combo Touch and the Magic Keyboard share several keyboard features that are universal between the two. You have scissor switch keys offering good tactility and responsiveness. You have fully functional multi-touch trackpad that offers great control. You have adjustable key brightness, even though they're both implementing it in a different way. You have the inverted T-shaped arrow keys. You have the globe key for access for emojis, which who doesn't love emojis? And you have one millimeter of key travel and 18 millimeters of key pitch, which is the distance between the center of each key. Now there are a few places where Logitech Combo Touch really pulls ahead of the Magic Keyboard, including a full row of iOS function keys across the top that allow you to control screen brightness, key brightness, media, volume, as well as lock the device and one tap home screen. Now, in terms of typing experience, I am the type of typer who can get accustomed to typing, a lot of typing in that word, in about 10 minutes, and the same rings true for each of these keyboards. Like, you know, 10 minutes worth of use, I can get accustomed and I'm typing on it somewhere between 65 and maybe 75 words a minute. Each of these keys feel very similar with their typing experience, and you probably would not notice a difference thinking one is better than the other unless you actually had the opportunity to type on them back to back. So I wouldn't necessarily be worried about getting a worse typing experience on either one of these. Apple's Magic Keyboard, Logitech Combo Touch, they both offer a great typing experience. So you should be confident in that. Now, before we get into the next section, if you are enjoying today's video where I'm comparing these two iPad keyboards, consider hitting like on this video so YouTube knows to send this video out to other people who have similar interests such as you and I. And if you want to consider joining the community where I help people, to, again, just like you, get the most out of their tech, help make purchase decisions related to their iPad, their iPhone, their Mac, and help them just be more productive with their tech. Now let's talk about the trackpad experience. Now the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard, obviously it's first party, it's gonna be beautiful. We have the trackpad size, which is 1.75 inches tall by 3.86 inches wide, which seems like a pretty big surface area. Here on the Logitech Combo Touch, we have 2.26 inches tall by 4.45 inches wide, which is a significant amount of difference. Apple has a list of compatible iPadOS gestures on their website, and I'll have that support article linked in the video description below. But I went through that support article and I tried all the gestures and all of them worked equally on each of these devices. I could not find one that did not work or that had trouble working. So I would suggest that if you have something that you're looking to test, let me know what it is in down in the comments below and I can try that gesture for you. But for the most part, I can't find anything that works any differently on each of these keyboards. Now, it is the end of the day and you need to figure out where you need to spend your hard-earned money. Do you spend $300 on the Magic Keyboard from Apple or do you spend $200 on the Logitech Combo Touch? Here's how I would approach that problem. First, you need to figure out whether you are cost-sensitive or not. Is it really a significant deal for you to spend the extra hundred bucks? If you are cost-sensitive, here's something I would think about. If you take the dollar amount of the keyboard, right, $300, and you think about how long you're gonna own this keyboard and the iPad for, it's probably at least four years. That's 1,460 days. If you divide the $300 cost by 1,460, you get roughly 20 cents per day. On the flip side, you have this keyboard, which is 200 bucks. It's gonna be roughly be 13 cents a day. So the difference between the two is seven cents per day. 20 cents per day to own the Magic Keyboard, it's 13 cents a day to own the Combo Touch. If you really like the Magic Keyboard, don't feel guilty about it. You're gonna keep it for a number of years and cost per day is relatively low when you look at the economics of it. So that's what I would consider. If you aren't cost sensitive and you simply want the best that you know, there is, the Magic Keyboard is the real deal. It offers a great typing experience. It offers a great trackpad experience. It does have that cool cantilever design. You have a additional USB-C port here in the spine of this case that allows you to charge it from here while it's in the Magic Keyboard and leaving the USB-C port or the Thunderbolt port open, maybe you wanna connect an SSD, maybe you wanna connect some type of flash drive, or maybe even you wanna connect an external monitor. If Apple can deliver the goods in iPad OS 16, let me know if you're excited about that. 
because I know I am. This is certainly a great choice. This is really the gold standard for keyboard cases. Now, what I would tell you is that there are consequences of that choice, obviously, because every choice has both positives and negatives. The first consequence is that there's very minimal protection. So putting your iPad in here, you have the risk or run the risk of getting bumps and bruises along that side of your iPad because there's no protection. Because you can easily you know, take your iPad on and, or put your iPad on and off. It does have that consequence because of that no protection. But depending on who you are and how you use your iPad, you might not care about that, right? It's very simply. But if you are the type of person who cares about it, the Logitech Combo Touch is a great choice. It offers a very close, if not equal to, typing and trackpad experience as the Magic Keyboard. It does have the full row of iOS function keys at the top, which will allow you to be more productive. You don't have to worry about swiping down from Control Center to turn up your music, turn down your music, volume, keyboard brightness, all that other good stuff. That's all done right here within these keypads. It does have a very large trackpad as well. In addition to, you have the ability to take the keyboard on and off and use this in multiple contexts. Now, some people might find this annoying. It really just depends on who you are. I don't necessarily mind this at all because I like flexibility and I like options. Now, depending on how you type with your keyboard, you might not like the fact that there is this kickstand because when you are typing on this, you do need to be mindful if you're a lap typer. If this is on your lap, you need to balance both the keyboard on your lap and then also this back hinge as well. So if you're typing and you might have this on one part of your legs or the very front of your knees, you might have to kind of wiggle or finesse this when you're typing. But again, it really depends on whether or not you're using that in that context. Maybe you're on the couch, maybe you're sitting in a chair and you're just typing on it. It does cause concern for some people, depending on how they use it. But I don't find it a big deal. I don't necessarily find myself in that scenario very often. I have something special for you since you've made it this far. I do have some more Apple Retro stickers in stock. So comment Retro down below. I will pick five random people and mail one out to you. Let me know what you think about either keyboard case down in the comments below. Which one are you going to choose? My name is Mike. This is Tech 24-7 TV. Folks, I will talk to you in the next one.